Hello everyone, this is Lorenzo from Iteco and I'll try to give you a quick introduction to the new virtual event platform that we devised for the ITF online meeting. I'll try to cover everything ranging from how to authenticate to the platform, how to use the moderation tools, the chat and other features. And I'll also try to cover a bit the, the different roles that you can take into the platform like participants, chairs and so on and so forth. To join a session, you actually have to log in via your data tracker account. So we'll do exactly that. A new dialog will appear, which will then show the, the prompt. Let's see if I can actually remember my account. And there it is, I'm in. And as you can see, the first thing that the platform asks is access to my uh, local devices. And as we'll see later, this is just needed in case you actually want to speak during, during the event. And here I am, you can see there is a small preview that allows you to pick your, your devices. So for instance, I have more than one device. I could choose which microphone I want to use. And at the same time, I could also choose which webcam I want to use. I'm fine with those. So let's just go on. As soon as we join the room, there are several different things that we may want to have a look at. So first of all, this is our uh, our participant area. So as you can see, there are some buttons here that will allow us, for instance, to share our screen, uh, ask for the video floor, the audio floor, and things like this, and we'll get to those in a minute. We can also see uh, that there is a list of participants here. In this case, we have Tobia Castaldi that is actually acting as the chair of the room. And right now he is, for instance, presenting something. You can see that we can we can see he's sharing his webcam over here and he's also sharing his screen at the same time. We'll get to how you can do those yourself in a minute. There are also other other participants in the list. Right now you can see there are some that are identified as Jabber users and some that are identified as participants. Participants are those that are actually in the room using the Miteco client that you are seeing right now. Jabber users are instead participants that are just in with their own Jabber client. And Jabber is an important thing to mention here because if you if we go over this tab here, we can actually see the Jabber room that this room is, uh, is co connected to. So for instance, I could send a message to everybody here. And this would be sent to the Jabber room and everybody could, could interact uh, at the same time. We can also do uh, private messaging if we want. So if we go back to the participants list, you'll see that a small balloon icon appears whenever I hover over a specific participant. So just let's just say hello to Tobia here and we'll send him a private message. A new small window appeared here. So we can say hi Tobia. He'll see the message and he also will be able to reply to us and this will be a private conversation so it will be something between me and Tobia and not something that will end up in the in the jabber logs to to say something there are also some other buttons that we can use to to navigate different features in the platform so right now for instance we are in the presentation view where we can see the main speakers the slides and so on but we also have a gallery view and again i'll show that in a minute we can use the note taking tool the shared editor that allows participants to to take notes during the session we can also see the meeting materials for this uh, for this meeting session and so on and so forth we'll get to those in a second as well audio and video are of course an important part of of the of the remote participation tool so again we'll show how you can actually share your uh, media in a second but first i wanted to focus on some of the controls that we that we make available for the streams that you're actually retrieving. So first of all, you can see uh, that the with, that we have an incoming audio stream looking at the this bar uh, on the bottom of the page. And for instance, for the audio stream, we can also change the volume of the audio. So for instance, if the, lo the audio is too loud or too low for our own needs, we can just change this, this tweak bar here over a little. So that's basically we can change the volume of the incoming audio stream to, to our liking. Uh, we have also a way to disable audio entirely if this is something that you require for any reason and in case audio stops working for you for for some reason there is also this button over here that allows you 
to reconnect to the audio stream, which can be helpful in case, for instance, uh, the audio connection was lost for, for any reason. And there are similar features for the video streams as well. So in this case, we can see Tobias video stream and Tobias screen at the same time. And as you can see, for both videos, there are some icons over here that, that, allows us, that allow us to, to play a bit with those streams. So for instance, I could expand the, the screen sharing video and reduce it back to, to a smaller size. Or I could basically also stop the feed entirely like this. In this case, I'm not receiving the slides anymore, which can be helpful, for instance, if I don't have enough bandwidth to receive all of the incoming streams, but I can always at any time restore it and subscribe to, to it again. And I can do this for all the videos in the platform, whether it is a screen sharing or whether it is Tobia or any other contribution that is being received at any specific time. And as I was mentioning, there are some buttons over here that can also help uh, a bit. So for instance, I can have a gallery view that allows me basically to focus just on the conversation part. So in this case, the slides disappear and the uh, video speakers, so only the people that are contributing the webcam show uh, in this gallery view instead. In this case, they're just Tobia. Uh, as soon as I get my video floor in a second, we'll show how this gallery view basically changes and allows to basically have a different view of all the incoming streams that are taking place. Of course, there may be times where you actually want to speak to the room yourself, whether it's, for instance, to make a question or, when, or if you actually have to make a remote presentation in the room. So, And for this, you can actually take advantage of these controls that we see over here. And all of these controls are actually moderated. So uh, you're actually supposed to, to ask for permission to, to, send, to send your media and a chair will actually either approve or deny the request. So first of all, the, all the... All the media have actually separate permissions and this is actually done on purpose because we actually want people to be able for instance to just share their audio and not their video if they don't want for instance or vice versa depending on what the context is so in this case let's start by asking the permission to speak so let's click on this microphone icon over here as you can see we are now in the audio queue and Tobia now just accepted our our request. So right now you can see that my the color of my name here changed. So this is makes it much more obvious that I'm actually uh, in that I'm actually presenting something in the room. So that I'm actually speaking. At the same time, you can also see a waveform over here that shows that basically. Uh, this is my uh, audio actually being sent to the room. So both of these indications make it quite obvious that you're actually speaking to the room. And so this is what you should pay attention to in case you were actually you actually didn't want to uh, to contribute audio to the room and you did it by mistake, for instance. Let's send our video as well at the same time. Again, we are in the video queue. And now Tobia accepted our video as well. And so here I am again, you can see my video over here once more, which again brings us to the to the gallery view. Now that there are more speakers at the same time and maybe the slides are not as important, we may actually want to show uh, the gallery view instead. And right now, as you can see, the focus is just on the conversation part. So it's just me and Tobia talking to each other. And if there were other participants, the gallery view would accommodate room for, for everybody involved at the same time. Now I want to share my screen as well. So let's just do that using the screen icon that I see over here. Tobias just approved the request. So now I'm basically asked if I actually really want to share my screen. I'll click yes. And a new, device, and a new window will appear where I can basically choose what I want to share. So I may want to share the entire screen. I may want to share a single application. It really depends on what we, what we want to do. So. Let's just share the whole screen for the sake of simplicity. And here it is. Now you can see my screen looping in as, as an Inception movie. Uh, and basically and the whole screen is now being visible to all the participants in the room. So right now I'm done with my presentation. So I'll just release all the floors. I'll start by releasing the screen. I'll release my webcam as well. And eventually I'll also release my, my audio stream. And right now I'm not speaking anymore. Now let's say that we want to try and get the audio floor again, maybe because we want to try and make another question or another presentation or something like this. In this case though, we'll show the chair denying the request, possibly because the, the mic line is actually cut or there is no more room for, 
for any other intervention. So let's just try to, to get the audio floor again. In this case to be, I, you see, as you see, it says that there is no more time for questions and he denies the request. Another interesting feature is the note-taking uh, editor, which allows participants during a session to actually take notes uh, during, during the session itself. And uh, the tool for that in the ITF is called CodeMD, which is actually integrated in Miteco. So all you need to do is go to click on this icon here to show the editor tab, and then just click here to, to load the, the shared editor, which will basically load the whole uh, the whole framework and as you can see somebody already started taking notes here and uh, there are different features that you can take advantage of and so as you can see it's basically a very simple editor that allows you to take notes and add any kind of text that you want to actually be related to this session while everything is integrated in the platform you may actually want to have access to uh, to the actual meeting materials so and this is exactly what you can get access to if you click on this button over here so if you click on the meeting materials page you'll see that some additional materials appear so first of all you have access to the agenda of the meeting in this case this uh, this demo room is associated to the steer uh, the steer event and that's why you can see the agenda for for that and at the same time, you also have access to the slides for all the presentations that will take, take place during the session. So in case you want to access them offline and, and follow them on, on your own time. Another important feature in the ITF is actually taking HUM remotely. And in fact, in this case, you see the chair just uh, opens a new, a new HUM session. So they made a question, they actually discussed it uh, via audio and in this tab here we can actually see two different options so we can either loud hum softly or we can hum loudly so in this case let's hum loudly in favor of whatever option was being discussed and we'll basically wait for the results to, to come back in this case the, the, the hum results were that basically that it was very very lightly in favor of, uh, of whatever the question was so not really some not really strong consensus consensus but something that shares can actually take take into account a chair is actually a, a stronger role within within itf meeting sessions and more in particular for instance they are not bound by the moderation that we discussed previously so in this case for instance you can see that as a chair, I could actually either share my screen or send my video or send my audio anytime that I wanted. I really don't need to ask permission to anyone. And of course, I'm not Simon Romano, I'm just borrowing his account, so I, I hope he won't, he won't mind. So in this case, let's get access to both to, to the video stream and to the audio stream as well. In this case, as you can see, I basically already took, took the permissions for myself. I didn't need to get, to get in queue for anything. Other participants do need to get in queue instead. So if they want actually to, to start talking within the room, they actually have to ask permission. And I, as a chair, will actually be able to see those requests and react upon them. So in this case, for instance, I can see that both Tobia and Pepe are actually interested in sharing something. So I can see that Tobia is trying to share everything, possibly is trying to make a remote presentation. So let's accept all of his, all of his requests. And instead we'll deny the request to, to Pepe because Tobia needs to make his presentation and Pepe doesn't need to bother him for the time being. And as you can see, very simply, we moderated this request by allowing Tobia to share everything and denying the requests by Pepe. But of course, as a chair, you are uh, you have access to to this functionality to to take care of the mic line in a more in a very dynamic way. As a chair, another important function to have available is actually the ability to start gathering hums. So basically the ability to, to make a question that is relevant to the working group and then gather consensus from the room as, in, in, as hums from the, the room itself, which is easy to do, of course, in a, in a live session, a bit harder to do in a virtual session instead. Um, this is something that we can do through this tab here. So we can basically start a new hum which will basically send the request to all the participants in the room to actually hum and contribute basically what they feel about the question that I, that I just made. Of course, as a chair, I cannot hum. I need to just gather consensus from the other participants in the room. And as soon as all the participants have expressed their, their feeling about 
about the the question we'll get some some feedback back so let's just wait for for a few more seconds uh, in, in the Miteco application right now it's 35 seconds until a, a, requ a response comes back and in this case we can see that basically there is the, re the response was a pianissimo which means that we gathered a very light uh, consensus so not strong consensus but still we got some some feedback from the from the participants and we can use it accordingly that's all and i hope you now have a better understanding of how the whole platform works see you online